picture this. A young Hindu girl is allegedly stalked by a young Muslim boy in Muzaffarnagar. And there are communal tensions in the city. An online video of two boys being lynched to death by a mob goes viral at the same time. And now there is fire and death in the city. Turns out, the video actually records the lynching of two Pakistani boys in the city of Sialkot. Anti-Muslim rights strike in Myanmar and Northeast India. And the entire Northeast look for cover. Online images of anti-Muslim rights go viral at the same time, followed by panic messages through mass SMSs. And there is an exodus of Northeasterners from various parts of the country. For all the dark hints of a cyber jihad, Investigators who comb through some 5 million text messages and tens of thousands of websites found no hint of single point authorship. A new virus seems to have found home in cyberspace. This virus is emitting its poison into the very fabric of our society through remote infection. Who is spreading this viral disease? Where has the virus come from? Cobra Post Associate Editor Sayyid Masroor Hassan pierces through the diseased world of online social media to expose the germ of the disease. This is Operation Blue Virus. The largely unregulated world of social media now seems to be India's principal vector for fueling negative spirit. Highly inflammable online content finds credibility in an already charged online climate of hate and distrust. Operation Blue Virus exposes the social media companies in the business of generating vituperative online content in exchange for a fee. This investigation uncovers the subversive activities of these companies that are in direct violation of the law of the land. Representation of the People Act, the Information Technology Act and several provisions of Indian Penal Code. Cobra Post presents the chilling truth behind social media campaigns and you are watching Operation Blue Virus. Cobra Post undercover reporter poses as a frontman for a fictitious politician who desires promotion on social media. In addition to promoting the Netaji, he desires an intense negative propaganda for the fictitious Netaji's fictitious opponent. He meets the heads of dozens of social media companies and states his purpose. The services offered collectively by these companies and the processes adopted by them range from unethical to illegal. They were willing to generate a vast fake following on Netaji's Facebook page by generating lakhs of fake online profiles. They offered to make fake profiles of Muslims and add fake Muslim followers to it. This is their attempt to attract a large Muslim following. They then used the platform to generate positive propaganda about the client and negative comments about his opponent. They were willing to generate negative propaganda for Netaji's opponent on online forums. The team members will join online public forums and post comments from these forums such that it appears to be coming from the common man. They offer to make inflammatory videos go viral on the internet. They have arrangements with cyber cafes for the task where surfers are hired on an hourly basis to fabricate Facebook likes. They have developed an in-house database of personal, vocation and location information of voting adults. They offer this database for customized sorting on the basis of caste, age, income level and locality. They use dynamic IPs and computers physically located outside of India to avoid tracing the source of online content. They hack into machines outside their offices for posting defamatory content using their IPs. They make cash transactions to avoid any paper trail leading to their activities. They use internet-based messaging systems such as WhatsApp to circumvent try regulations on mass SMS. They use short codes instead of actual phone numbers while sending mass text messages. This enables them to mask the identity of the sender during SMS campaign. These SMS campaigns are often generated from foreign countries. 
They use overseas servers to route campaign emails and SMS over the internet. They have developed strategic applications for smartphones that push campaigns to the users, even during the three days prior to the elections when Election Commission forbids further campaigning. Thus, they fully exploit the fact that Election Commission only regulates on-ground campaign and campaign through radio, TV and phones and not internet. They set up offices in remote physical locations to avoid being detected. They hire content writers and graphic artists to make defamatory content appear attractive to viewers. They use assembled computers for negative campaign and destroy them after the project is over. They have proxy codes set up on their machines such that their locations change every hour. Some of these companies are listed companies. They make sure their company is fully insulated from the negative campaigning. They often have arrangements with NRIs in countries such as Philippines to do the job. In addition, they port the negative content online from countries such as China, US and UAE. They employ IT professionals from IT companies in cities such as Bangalore. These include software developers, graphic artists, cartoonists, animation experts and database management experts. They also employ students of journalism and mass communication on contract to produce the content. They will produce fake documents to acquire Wi-Fi connections so the internet activity is not traced back to the company. They will also ensure that there is no connection established between the company and the client. Social media is expected to play a big role in the forthcoming assembly and national polls. A number of these companies claim to be engaged in Narendra Modi's election campaign on the internet. It remains a big question if the same processes are being adopted in his real-life political campaign. In fact, one of them actually tells the reporter that the public will lose faith in the election process if they come to know the truth behind the online campaign. Sensing the menace that the online world is capable of causing, Election Commission is looking at ways of regulating communication through social media for campaigning. This investigation shows that Election Commission has good reason. Overwhelmed by the revelations of Operation Blue Virus, Cobra Post decided to take this investigation a step ahead. We created a dummy website for a fictitious company by the name Mercury Aviation, as well as a Facebook page for it. Our undercover reporter approached one of these companies with a fictitious story and paid him to actually execute all that he promised. Sure enough, he was not disappointed. We will present the story at the end of the documentary. You will see in the following case studies. The price demanded for these services range from a few lakhs to crores of rupees. Research shows that the social media sites such as Facebook, YouTube and Twitter are more persuasive and accessible than television ads. According to Internet and Mobile Association of India, there are 87 million mobile internet users. With mobile penetration into rural landscape, internet is not a privilege for the urban few anymore. Bear that in mind as you watch Operation Blue Virus.